Okay, so I'm working on white today. Thought I'd try something a little different. Um, I almost, I bet you, once out of maybe 30 times I work on white, but I thought, let's give it a shot. So we're gonna add a little tone to the canvas. Just get some, and I just took a little brown and orange and blue, just to get some sort of tone up here. And now the problem with doing this is it's wet. And when I paint back into it, I'm gonna have some problems. But I'll show you one way to resolve that a little bit. So let's get a little bit of tone up here. All right, let's take that tone and take a little, take a cloth, maybe a little turp, move it around. So, that's still wet, very wet. So I'm gonna take my cloth without pigment and I'm gonna get as much moisture off this canvas as I can so that I just have stain on here. Mainly just stain. All right, there's a little bit. We'll do one more try. One more time with just a clean cloth and no I'm rubbing pretty hard, by the way, just so you guys know. Okay, I, that's pretty good. So I got a little bit of a tone up there. And with that in mind, I am going to begin with a little bit of a sketch, a little brown, a little blue, and we'll kind of, we're gonna center this a little bit more. He's leaning, I wanna straighten it up. So we're gonna move this over to about maybe here. Eh, about here, how's that? About there. This slightly over midpoint, about here. So we got there two two lines. Now I want to straighten that. It's a little bit of a perspective. So this is actually going a little bit uphill, as is this. All right. Then we get the side. It's kind of this cool old dilapidated barn, which I really kind of like. I love these um, old barns that are almost falling down. Uh, I guess it's because I don't have to be, I mean, I think it's because of character. Uh, they just, there's more character in them, but it, maybe it's just because I'm a lazy and I don't want to be um, accurate with doing precision. This looks like it's pretty straight across at about this point. Now, and then where does this point? Just past this, just past this. So there's that point angle, top part of it, right about here. And then the bottom part, uh, and it's kind of falling down, which I really like. All right, let's kind of keep going with that. Let's do, there's a fence, falls right about below here, and it goes this way. It's kind of all, it's kind of flat, but hilly type terrain. Now we're gonna put a big, and we're gonna, I don't want this here, so I wanted it to, it to go off the page. So we're gonna bring it down, over, over, down, squeeze some stuff back in here. This, and then we're gonna have a nice big area. So we're gonna break this, these spaces up. Uh, there's gonna be a little fence on this side. Right about here. There's a vehicle back here. And I'm just looking at it as shapes, really important. Now, I'm not gonna do all this bizarre fencing right in there. It's just, it's just too much and it's very confusing. I do like the, the vertical posts. There's one back here and there are area up in here and vertical posts there's one that sits right about here big one another one that sits a little bit off kilter this way and then some a lot of smaller ones and this, there's like two layers I'm going to do the back layer okay now that feels okay to me, all right? So let's start in with doing, as I always like to think of, uh, shape drawing. 
Um, so what are we going to start with? Let's start with the sky. And let's take my, uh, oh, where is it? Little gesso brush. And what color are we going to make that sky? Ah, let's make it blue. Let's go with the traditional blue sky. Uh, just for, because I have already have a warm underneath. One thing I don't like to do, and you guys, I don't like the same color going from top to bottom. Definitely want to work the gradation out. So as it comes down, I'm going to let more of this background color come through. Notice I'm painting very thin, rubbing it down, because I know I'm going to be coming over it with other pigment. And whenever you do that, you know you're going to... Uh, you know you're going to have a little trouble if you get your paint too wet initially. Okay. And maybe it's not going to go up. Maybe that'll be off. Okay. So, next thing, let's set that tree up. That dark light. So we're going to go dark, pretty dark. Green, brown. I have a little white in my brush, still from the sky. Green sap green and the umber that's pretty dark now i like to throw a little blue into it since it's back there and we're going to kind of carve around just really kind of do some nice edge strokes so that i kind of have the tree to a degree done i don't have to go back and recreate edge nice edges particularly the dark edges like that. I kind of actually, I, I like that quite a bit. The uh, only thing is I want it over further. It should be all the way over here. And I stopped it too soon. So we're gonna bring this up a little bit. Don't like that anywhere near as much as what I did previously. That's just the way it goes. Brown, I'm getting picking up a lot of that pigment. So I brown, blue, and green together again. We'll kind of come in, be real free, fun, and abstract with it. The top, a little more blue, maybe a touch more white into that blue just to get a little bit of a, maybe over in here, a little bit back. I don't want too much, a little bit back in here. Down, now where do I see it? Right down at the base, right down here by that fence. So let's get that nice dark tone in there. Nice and dark. And we do a little scrubbing up above, but to add some green to that and some ochre. More ochre. And what the reason being, I'm going to hit not not enough ochre. <laughs> so I threw a little threw a little Naples into that ochre, so it lightened up just a little bit, because I don't want this as dark as this. So the energy is kind of fun. Um, energy meaning kind of the kind of the gusto, for lack of a better word, that I'm putting the paint down with. Okay, that feels pretty good. There's a tree over here. Let's get that one in while we're there. Ochre, green, same same color. Nowhere near as dark. What I wanted, I wanted about in here because I've actually cut off a little bit of that space. We still want that coming in because it helps the composition. I like the the shape of what's happening with the um, the sky, the negative shape that is occurring because of the, the foliage. And I don't want the, this all this foliage. I want it to feel really nice, but I don't want it to be the, the star. I don't want people to look at it and go, well, really nice. Uh, my, my goal is to make it feel comfortable within the situation, uh, within the painting that I'm painting. So a little bit darker down at the base. And we've kind of blocked it. Now the only thing I really want to block in is a few lights on that tree and that's about it. And then we're going to move right in. Normally I don't paint light and shadow together. I'm going to in this kind because it's part of the background. So I added white 
or Naples yellow. Boy, that's pretty close. I'm gonna add a little bit more Naples. Let's try it one more time. Uh, that feels pretty good. Gonna add some medium because the paint's feeling stiff. Let me let me talk a little bit about that. Uh, I do. I react, and I think most artists do, to how the paint feels as it's going down. If it feels like I'm struggling to have to put it down, that means the paint is probably too dry, and I need to add some medium to it, which is what I just did. I added medium, so now it goes down a lot. Easier. I don't have to press hard. If you if you notice, I'm just kind of gingerly making little marks, sometimes bigger, sometimes smaller. Just try to put get the feel of the light and shadow of that tree. Now, if there's more going on in the lights than I'm indicating. And if I have time, again, very much like if I'm doing a plain air, if I have time, I will go back and add more into it. If I don't have time, I'm hoping that it looks good as is. So, and that's just, that's part of working within a given time frame. Now, I'm deepening the value as we move down. In other words, I'm getting rid, I'm not making it as light, not as much white. And I don't care if it smears into that paint a little bit, but I kind of hope it does, because I, I want the variation of value as well as color. Little bit of light sneaks back there. We got little hickeys of other color coming through. But for right now, I'm just going to leave it right there. Maybe while I've got a little bit of that color, allow it to infiltrate over into the light part of this and down. Okay. And let's just leave that alone for a little bit because I got enough information in there, I think. To make it work. Um, just step it back for a second because I kind of want to get a feel for it. That looks pretty good. It's kind of fun, huh? Okay. Let's not dwell too long on any one thing. We'll put some of the spindly uh, stuff in a little bit later. Right now, I want to move on to some other parts of the painting. Um, I want to get a little bit of more dark right here. And then this fence is pretty dark, so let's, get that, let's just block that fence in. It's kind of thin. Paint's kind of thin. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna start dealing with the deep shadows. So what, what does that mean? Blue, brown, uh, and I'm not gonna go all the way to my blue and brown. I actually have a just a minuscule amount of white. So I I know I'm not as dark as I can go, but I'm still pretty damn dark. So we're gonna use this as kind of our drawing. I know that's gonna be warmer, but I just blocked it in as a shape right now. A little more brown, a little more blue. Squeeze the residue out of the brush so it's not as as dark as I can go. It, give, I want a little latitude, a little bit of room to still go darker if I need to. And by adding, taking that same color, and I just add a little bit of my cad orange hue and a little, lizard, little lizard, I still kept it very dark, but warm now, because this is a warm facade to this, uh, this barn. So I want that shadow to be as dark as the other shadows, but really warm. And there's a few little darks. Might as well snap them in there as I see them. They're underpainting, and whether they're right or wrong at this stage, it just 
you know, I use the word placeholder a lot. That's kind of what they are. Uh, there's a kind of a gray brown fence there, right? So let's take that brown, mix it with the blue, the white, and give me kind of a gray brown. If it goes too blue, then I just mix more brown in. Let's test it. I want it lighter and a little more brown. So I added more white and more asphalt and a little bit more white, maybe some Naples instead of white. Let's see what that does. Okay. Still not as warm as I would like it. So I added a little ochre to that. Let's see what that does. Still didn't do it. Maybe some orange. And I don't want it to go too cold. There, that, that feels a little bit better. Go over here. There's going to be a shadow that comes down there. And this fence is going to kind of sit back. And here there's a little bit of a trailer behind it. So I go back to my darker color, shadow color. And we're going to bring this shadow down across the fence there. Okay. And there's some other shadows that happen right back in here. And a little bit, little strokes. I want to get a little bit of busyness on the rooftop up here, up in here. I want to raise that a little bit. Probably have to raise that fence a little too now that I look at it. The fence should probably be more up in here. But let's can make it kind of rickety too. Let's doesn't have to be all that straight. Okay. The front of the building. What color is that gonna be? All right. Um, it's gonna be warm. It's gonna be the warmest warm in the picture. And it's pretty light. So I took my uh, cad orange hue, a little ochre, and a little, um, and I want a little more color than it has, but I don't want it to be, or I should say a little darker. I don't want the color to be really bright. Um, that is actually pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna, a little bit more orange, white, and Naples, and I think we've got it. Let's start with that at least, because I can always augment that, make it brighter, make it prettier if I want to. Um, Clean that up. I didn't make that shadow big enough, so I'm going to grab a separate brush here. And I've kind of got that color mixed up. It's it's kind of a nothing warm color anyway. So, but what I can do is be more careful with it. I can be um, I can get that shape a little more accurate. So we're going to paint it that way. There we go. A little more accurate there. A little more accurate here. And then we'll keep going with the front of that facade. And there's going to be some tonal value, color, slight variations to give it uh, the age that it deserves. So I hope I'm a little too intense. It's a little more washed out. I'm going to add some washed out areas to it. So. That, that's gonna be fine. I'm not gonna really be concerned about that. I'll bring that over just a little bit further and get a little bit more of this in. The opening of the door is gonna be about in there. Okay. Now, I'm gonna use a little bit of a smaller brush like my number two. I'm just gonna go in and add a couple little, normally that I do this later, but I'm not. I don't wanna overdo it. I just want a couple of little notches in there to help. And you know what, if I, I'm changing the proportion of this barn a little bit, um, I don't care. That's not a cop out either, by the way. I really don't care. I want it to look good, whether it, is exactly the proportionality of this exact barn. Doesn't matter. There's barns of so many shapes and sizes that it's how the painting looks. And I, I'm 
I want to give it a little bit more. So it's not as wide. I, I cut up a little bit if I want to in here. Um, I can take that shadow and add a few little shadow details like that and that. So add a little bit. Let's take and add the opening in the door because that's a very important shape, very important part of the painting. So again, going back to pretty much my dark colors, slightly warm, top of it runs pretty even right about in here. Real dry, I had to add more medium to it because the paint was too dry. The center of it, that's the center of it, should be right here. Okay, once I know where the center is, then I know about how far to go on each side. Although that door, there we go, one there and there. All right, and with that same kind of color, not quite as bright, maybe I'll pop a little bit more orange into that color. Let's hit the shadow on the side of that door, barn door. A little bit shadow up here. Let's look on the other side. Barn door here and a little bit of shadow there. Okay, so it's shaping up. Now, I can be really put that in, put that in. If I if it messes it up a little bit here and there, pull a pull a line down that kind of gives the flavor of some of the boards. Don't do too many. Underdo, don't overdo. All right. Uh, let's get a little bit of this front plane in. First, let's finish off the bottom here. I got some dirt in the brush, so I'm using it while I've got it there. Just, just to add some variation in some of the, uh, some of the front of the barn. Okay, let's take this ground plane, and it's, you know, you kind of have to say, kind of what color is it? Well, it's probably an unbleached titanium and white. So, and I don't have that. So what I do is I just take white, uh, just a hint of, of the asphaltum. Maybe mix a little bit of, of um, Naples yellow into it. A little bit of medium and I'm going to be almost the color of the board of, the, of my very dry brush. There's a trough there. Oh, I like that. I think I'm going to put that in. I didn't even see that before. This is the cool stuff you discover as you paint. <laughs> okay, there is a little bit of a trough and it has a little bit of a blue cast, but not a bright blue, kind of a dull. It's right here. It looks like it's probably about here to about here. Yeah. And it goes down. It's hidden behind some things. So we, we see a little bit of the bottom of it. And we see a little bit of the opening. And there's a little bucket inside the doorway. Okay. So what we do is just indicate those things. These are things I didn't even notice before, when I had first started. Ah, terrible stroke. Okay, uh, some nice greenery um, that's growing around it. Just weeds, I shouldn't call it nice greenery. I'm sure they don't feel that, but and the weeds are like right here. So it's just, it's basically, uh, the sap green with a little bit of a um, little bit of ochre mixed into it, a little bit in there, just kind of scuff it along. It comes up a little bit brighter, so brighten it up with a little bit of uh, Naples, and it sits behind. So I probably should have put it in there before I even did this uh, trough. That's okay. If I me I messed it up anyway, so. Um, you know, oil's pretty forgiving. It's a very forgiving paint. Uh, I think acrylics is actually more forgiving, but only because it dries and you can paint over it almost immediately. And 
with oils, you have to be a little bit more careful as you paint over wet paint. Uh, but I, to a degree, that's also the beauty of oils. And some nice greenery back here. Okay. Anything more I need maybe over in front of this. Okay, now let's finish up with that ground that I was doing. There, there. There. This is probably gonna, oh, you know what? There's a side, I just, I'm just noticing stuff, you guys. This is fun. Just noticing. I noticed the side of this trough. Right there. And it probably is gonna have a little bit of a shadow. Um, now, let's kind of leave that alone, okay? Let's leave it alone. And let's just get kind of this whole foreground weeded area in. So I'm just gonna mix up all these kind of mucky colors that I already have here on my palette add a lot of medium, gonna get real thin, almost washy. We're just gonna kind of put a tone like that in. It's gonna get greener back in this one. It looks like this is a hill slightly that goes up here. Uh, and it can add some extra compositional elements to the piece by making that happen up. Oops, too blue. I gotta throw some more ochre into it. There we go, it's, it's more of a green that comes over here. And it's in kind of a deeper shadow here. And even down in here, there's some nice shadows. And then it, it gets lighter. So for that, I'm just adding Naples to the color I was already using, add a ton of turp. Um, and I just, I want it to be sloshy if that's a term. In other words, I don't want it, I don't want it to be thick and pasty. I might want to do that later, but for right now, it just wants to be kind of, so you can see it's drippy. Some straight maples, push it right into it. Let some of the, let the brush do the work. Have fun with the paintbrush and create illusions. Create illusions, not uh, the, that careful, refined detail that you might think you need. So we're going to leave that alone for a little bit. And I've got a, there's a plateau of much greener area. And it sits right, probably actually I'm gonna to need to add a little yellow to this, which is surprising. I generally don't need it. I don't have yellow laid out, so I'm gonna throw a little bit of a, um, of like a CAD type of a yellow. Let me see if I've got one handy. on Right on my palette. Um, there we go. It's a CAD yellow hue. And I'm just gonna bring, so I, get, I can intensify the green a little. That's the only reason I'm using it. Uh, I generally don't need it, so I'm going to take the sap, the cad yellow hue, and the white. And that looks pretty good, actually, that I just laid out here. Let's give it a shot, see how it, how it sits into the painting. It's a little brighter than I want, but what the heck, let's start with that, okay? So we're going to start right here. Work away. Now, I don't like it to just be a color, so I threw a little ochre into that color too. And we're gonna let that color go up and kind of fall behind some of these weeds in here. Okay, one of the reasons that I wanted to add that yellow is because I saw up in this area against the, against the fence, a little bit of a yellow area. And I don't know if it's mustard, I'm not really not sure what it is, um, but I do see it and I think it'll add a little bit of interesting texture and color 
to the peace. There's a lot of nebulous stuff in here. Nebulous meaning uh, a lot of things that you can't quite put your finger on exactly. And in a, in a way, it's a, an opportunity to practice kind of, um, God, I'm trying to find the right term, almost like a, like a form of vagary where you're, you're being vague about something. You know it's something's there, but you can't quite depict exactly what that is. So this is tends to be working somewhat. Now this green can, can come down here a little bit and it'll create a path that goes back here. The path is obscured a little bit by a lot of the um, posts. So we have a lot of the posts obscuring a lot of this stuff and it gets, it, it's, and I don't want to put all the posts in. I am going to put quite a few, but not every, uh, the exact amount that we see. I want to go back in here, bring that up, clarify that, bring the shapes back in here. Let's go back on this. I think I've got that where I want it. And now let's start in with a little bit of clarity. So I'm going to look at my time, and I'm about 20 minutes into the piece. All right, I haven't done anything with the roof. That's going to be a. That's really going to be some of the fun stuff. Is that roof? Um, I'll try and explain why, but for right now, I'm just going to start adding a little bit of. From, I don't want to use the word detail, but a little more information. So I'm mixing up a light color, kind of cool, a little bit of medium in it. And we're going to put the top of that post right there. Not light enough. I can tell you right now, not light enough. One more time. That feels better. And then there's another post where it sits right about here. And it overlaps that shadow really nicely. Okay. That works. It overlapped the shadow. Uh, there is... A lot of fun little, a lot of times you, you want to almost do this with a knife and it's just hit. Feeling of some, some of the lights on the weeds back in there. Now there's a little blue, looks like a trellis of some sort that is hanging in the shadow. You, I'm, uh, some of the stuff you guys can't even see, I'm sure it's right back in here, but it, it takes these empty areas and it actually helps them because instead of them just being vacant, it gives some sort of activity back in there. There looks like there's a sign or something that was hanging up in here. Right there, good. And this post goes down into shadow, there. So it's the light part, the shadow part. Um, let's go a little bit to the front of the building, and let's start to put in some of the, the light um, on the architecture, the, the light trim. Now, what is that? It's kind of a neutral warm, very pale neutral warm. So I mixed up brown, I uh, mixed up, I had a little residue of blue in my brush, and I'm just gonna test this out. I throw a little white into it also, and we're gonna see where this value sits. I'm gonna make it just a little bit brighter with white. And we'll do it again because I didn't like where it was sitting. So we're going to go all right there. Do it again. And again, if they're if I'm a little off and they're shaky, it just makes it more rustic. Put my little fingernail down. Okay, same color. I'm just kind of remixing it. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, but it doesn't have, so I'm just going to hit that area. And my paint is just about the right consistency. Actually, this breaks into that. I like that. And we're getting 
the same movement on this side. So that actually works okay. You know, it starts to it starts to complete the the front of that building. There's also, and I'm going to try and do it without getting into too many people's way here. Uh, this beam right across the top, not as thick. And it comes, uh, comes all the way there. And it's got a little dark between it, which separates it. Uh, a little dark right there. I hate to do this with a brush. Sometimes it's better with a knife, but. Okay. So we're gonna kind of hold it at that right now. Maybe amplify a couple of these shadows like right in here a little bit, make it a little bit bolder, a little bit more right here. Bring a little bit of stroking here and there. If I see, anything I see, if I see a feeling of something, I'm just going to add it right now. Okay, so we're starting to give kind of a nice feel to that. There's a lot of stuff breaking in front of it. There's a, a post right here. Smaller one here. This one's quite long. A little bit of a dark there. So you can see just adding in a little bit of this is really starting to give it some movement. Now, let's take this color and let's augment that color by, uh, what do I mean by that? I Change it. Do subtle variations of that color. So here's, this is a little colder. And I sit right here, it get, gets a little brighter and cold. So I can use two or three different colors. I'm just basically taking that, the one color and lightening it where I need to, maybe here. Maybe it comes up here. So, but every time you do that, do a little bit of it, stand back, see how it's beginning to feel. Because you can, you can overdo this and make it too equal. And by making it too equal, sometimes you detract from it. So I want to brighten it up over here. Maybe a little bit there. And I want to skip some, even though they all look pretty bright. Maybe put one right in here. And a narrower one right there. Maybe in the door a little bit. We'll put a little bit of a change. And then up above. Maybe over here. So what you're doing is you're, we're aging and we're giving character, so to speak. And I can actually take that same color, add more ochre to it, and just do a little bit of sweeping here and there. I add a little green to it. That's too green, but just by stroking over it a couple more times, I can bring it back into that orange area. Now, some of these boards, as they warp, they catch more light, like right here. So it catches a little bit more light. I'm standing back pretty far, and I'm just kind of fussing on areas that look to me to be too underdone, too plain. So let's, I haven't thrown darks. Another, I see another post, another interruption right here. And it's a little hole in the wood right there. And I see there's a bottom, and then there's a cement uh, foundation. But right at this point, I see a little bit of a foundation. And then that comes up, probably over here. So that cement foundation is lighter. That's right about there. And again, all this is just adding. Now, if I get, this starts getting too much, I just go right back into it with my base color, that kind of base orange. And you just kind of you work it. So if I need to bring more 
I, it, what you're doing is just add constantly adding texture. Now I can clarify a little bit of the cast shadow. A little bit of a piece of white right there. Okay. Let's keep moving on this thing, okay? Now this fence, it's very flat. It's darker as it moves inward and we get some tonal color tonal variations it's a little bit of a small brush to do this with but because the fence is literally made up of so many little sticks a lot of times the additions of a lot of strokes as long as they're don't feel over labored can work for you and you want to come back in the other way just like we did on the barn and put lights into it so not light enough let's try it again Now, that was light enough, but it was too thick and it wasn't sticking, so I had to add more medium. It starts to give the character. Now there's a, a cross beam on that. A lot of, lot of architectural information in this. And it gets dark underneath it. It isn't, it isn't exactly the same everywhere. Sometimes it's, it feels thicker and sometimes it feels thinner so we kind of go in here and there you're going to get a little darkness on the side of this post give it some dimension okay it's it's kind of coming together in my opinion um, I think I've got the trot this a little bit too low and I'm going to raise it. So we're going to do that. And do that, bring it up a little higher. Uh, and there's got a couple of ribs in it like A little bit of greenery. I kind of scuffed it in there already down here. I think that can come down a little further. I'm moving a few things around, bringing some of the weeds out in front a little bit more. In here. Now I want to put kind of a, a white side to this one back post. This post right here. It's kind of a blue gray. A little bit more white in it. Do it one more time. And then the back post also. The little post, one right behind it, this one. So all of this, this kind of little stuff, I'm trying to come up with a better term, but I, unfortunately that's all I can use. This little stuff that I'm adding is what gives this kind of rustic characteristic to this whole piece. And there is a, looks like a trailer or something of that nature back here. And we get little flickers of that coming through the fence. Little piece back in here, little pieces of light that we see hitting in these certain spots. Um, and a little bit of detail information on it, a little bit right about there, just to make it make it feel like something so it isn't just, and uh, you know, part of it is adding the appropriate amount of busyness to it, to an area. 
It's, it's not just that you have to explain exactly what everything is. Just give it, give it the, the busy characteristic that you see when you look at it. And very often that does the work. It's not that you have to make that an exact trailer. It's something behind. And that's, that's what we see. Now there's a, a little activity in front over off to the side and it breaks that up. It's right about, we get a little bit back in here, a piece of light happening. And then we get kind of a nice shape and a few cross pieces of wood, it looks like. Something like that. And what's happening is we're starting to get the right flavor. Now, um, I'm about 30, 35 minutes into it. And what I wanna start doing is putting some of these tree shapes in. So I think for that, what I might do is go back. I'm just looking to decide, making a decision as to what brush. I'm gonna pick up this Egbert because it's kind of flimsy and I'm gonna match that kind of blue, gray, brown color which I think is about what I just came up with. Let's see. Oh yeah, pretty close. Uh, very watery. And we'll take the first stroke and we'll just bring it right up and let it go that way. And then we'll bring this one down, bring it over, down, over, down, back. Okay, so you've gotta, you gotta be deliberate. You can't sit there and kind of uh, just nurture the heck out of it. You've gotta say, this is what I'm gonna do, boom, I, and do it. And if it's not exactly right, remember, trees, there's not a formula for tree. It's not, every tree can be slightly different. Your tree that you paint does not have to be the spitting image of the tree that you're depicting. It needs to feel correct or be comfortable. I'm using that word, that term a lot lately. I, not sure why, it's just something I started using and it, it works. So we're gonna bring a little bit more. This kind of a brush is so, um, free that you really can create a lot of information on it. Now, I, I feel like the whole facade needs to go a little lighter uh, when I step back and look at it, but that's based on the photo that I see. I'm just fussing around here with just the faint tip of this brush. I want to give the correct kind of feel on these trees. These, these leafless trees are so elusive, so difficult to paint and to give without over laboring. You just want to give it the correct feel. Now, when I stand back, that feels pretty good. I don't like it as much up close, but it's interesting. When I stand back, it actually looks better. So I guess I'm doing something right. I, I, I'm going to lighten a few of these a little bit. So I'm going to make that a little lighter back there. A little lighter back as it goes behind. Uh, maybe a little lighter on this side of this branch. A little lighter as it goes down. Here, same with this. Just adding a little light to it. Okay, so it all is the same. This looks pretty good. I think I could add a little color to it. Uh, I see some ochre, um, along with that ochre green, and right about in here. Probably went a little too strong with it, but it doesn't bother me a, a whole lot. We'll add a little bit more green. A little more brown to that green. 
and we'll bring it back into the color that we see overall in that, maybe a little more ochre into it. I'm changing colors a lot, when, particularly when I'm dealing with uh, natural foliage. So I really try not to stay with that one color. You know, it's like one note. Uh, there's a, a green part to the fence back in there. I see that it's, it looks like one of those green um, awnings. It's just a smack of right about there. Just kind of a smack right about. No, let's do it again. Right about there. Okay. Now the ground plane's looking okay. Um, this needs to be interrupted. Definitely, it's just it's standing out too much. And I'm going to do a little changing of that ground just by adding, bringing that up a little bit, adding a few more color variations so it doesn't feel kind of like it's just one, it's it's exactly one note. Again, they're feeling like there's a path right about here. So I'm going to kind of accentuate that. Looks like it goes back in space. And then it, over on this side of this plane, I just scuff that ground up. Um, this time I'm kind of dry with the paint because I want it to be a little scruffy. So that works. So let's start to put some of these posts in. Uh, no, I, I have time on that. You know what I want to do? I actually want to go back to the, let's go to the roof and then let's finish up this and really add some a lot more to that facade. I think um, it can we can do a lot more with it with just cleaning some nice variations in there. But let's get the roof in. Let's let's think about that roof. Now that is kind of a kind of a grayed rust color. Um, so I'm mixing up a little orange. I'm, I'm coming close. I'm going to throw a little bit more. Uh, I throw I throw a little alizarin into it and it went a little too far. I think this is going to be too dark. Uh, it's not brown enough on top of it. So I took some more asphaltum and that darkened it, so I had to add white. So when you add, when you darken, if, you, if your value is about right, which I was pretty close. There's a blue tarp. I actually like a lot of the coloration that I see up on that roof. And some of it is because it's the color of the roof that's been weathered. And some of it is simply a tarp that may have been laid over it. So I'm kind of going to use both. Oh, didn't, I don't like that edge. Nice sharp edge. We want to end. There we go. That edge kind of like that. Put a little bit more variation into this part of the roof. Just a little bit. And then we'll go in. I love that kind of blue tarp. Probably keep the rain out. You know, sometimes I love doing these rust rubs. But this isn't a rust. This is this blue is from um, it's an actual tarp that looks like it's been laid up there to uh, keep rain out. And I don't know how functional this barn is. I know exactly where it is. I've driven by it many times. I'd love to stop and paint it, but I, I, it's on a very busy part of a, an area, a street called Stony Point, here in uh, Santa Rosa, and you just can't stop and paint on Stony Point. I don't want to be too pretty with that color, so I, I'm killing it every now and then with a little alizarin, bringing it a little bit more to a to a gray violet, and it's a little darker in some spots, so it's not a neat, clean, flat color. And I got to get back far enough to see how it, how the values are setting. Color looks good from up close, but I can't tell how it's looking in terms of its overall value, and really until I step back. And I don't, I don't think I could say that enough uh, to, to students that are painting, to anyone. Stand back, stand back, stand back. That's how you judge. 
you judge your strokes, maybe some of your color nuances up close, but you, you, the success of the painting only happens when you step back and it works. It can look successful up close and you can get back and it's not working anywhere near like you thought it work, was working up close. That's, that's a very uh, humbling learning experience, by the way. Let's, there's a tarp up here. I don't like that. It's just too cruddy. So I'm just going to make this roof right here a little bit cleaner and use the darks that I see in there more or less as scuffs on the roof as opposed to a piece of tarp that's kind of blown away because that's really what it looks like. And the roof goes down here. So I'm graying it and darkening it. And then it goes up again. And that's where it's getting a lot of light, right in here. Right there, right there. Just a lot of Naples right there. Like, like I put up in here. But as it goes back, I kind of like that better than the, uh, I'll be darned. That doesn't happen too often. I like that better than the reference. Um, let's hope I, can, I don't screw it up now. I've been known to do that too. Where, where it's working, it's working, it's working. Whoops, it worked and I just blew it. You know, it's. Step back. Okay. Not gonna fuss with it too much because it is it's it's working. It scares me when that happens. Oh, I like that that nice point that I just did. Huh. It's one of the nice things about now let's do that one. The facing on that and it's cooler it's cooler but it's light so I already have a nice blue mixed up that I was playing with up in here so I just added a lot of white to that maybe a hint of Naples so it's really quite light I also need medium because I could feel as I was mixing it up the paint was very stiff so I added the medium so what am I gonna do um, I'm not I was gonna use a ball stick but I'm gonna be brave And up above. Step back. Value is right. I don't know if I like the strokes, but the value is right. Again, a little curving, a little sagging. A stroke that may be a little clumsier than, than I would if I were doing a nice pristine piece of New York architecture. Um, let's bring it out all the way. It comes out about here. Yeah, and then there's a piece, piece of a post right there it fades down and becomes a little darker put my little fingernail down step back back okay it, it feels pretty good I'm not crazy about the way this ends over here I think I can improve upon that and I'm going to I'm going to try right now it looks like there's a little piece hanging off it almost right in there and another piece that might hang off right about here and it just a lot of this stuff just adds some character to the thing it's not that it's it's not that I'm doing a hundred percent of exactly what I see 
that sometimes I just, I don't look at what I'm painting. Um, I look at the painting. And that'll tell me a lot more than trying to find and paint all this exacting detail. Um, and I don't want to put that down and say there's anything really wrong with painting that way, because there really isn't. Uh, it's a personal choice. It's like, uh, you know, it's, do you want to be uh, Nikolai Fetchin, or do you want to be Rembrandt, or do you want to be Sargent, or do you want to be Zorn, or do you want to be, um, you know, it's, it really comes down to your own personal intent. And if you want an abbreviated piece, paint an abbreviated piece. Don't paint a super refined piece because it's, you're, you're, going, you're going the wrong way. You're not following your, your initial thoughts. Um, I think that's a harder thing to understand than it is to, uh, it's easier, I shouldn't say that. It's a harder thing to do than it is to understand, um, which, is, which is very true. A lot of times intellectually, you can understand a lot of what you need to do and getting your hands to do it is a totally different, uh, different set of problems. Now I want this to be a little narrower. And the same with this. Okay, now I think, um, I think I just shut the camera. Just me alone in here. So if I do that, sorry. That's just my uh, clumsy nature. And still trying to keep uh, information kind of coming out and uh, with changing up my subjects um, as often as I can, as often as I feel is appropriate. Because I like to. It's, it's kind of that simple. I like dealing with a variety of subjects and not getting into a rut. Unless I'm working for a show. If I'm working for a show, I'm much, I love the idea of taking one theme and going all the way with that one theme. So, But um, I've taught for a long time and from my teaching, I've, one of the things that teaching has done for, for me personally is it has opened my mind to various ways of painting uh, because I've dealt with so many different types of students. And instead of staying into just this, my one realm, I will use the, the bastion or the, not the bastion, the, uh, the bag of tricks that I've accumulated over the years. Um, and I think I just have a lot to choose from because I like doing a lot of things. Um, and so I try and choose different things for the sake of, of demonstrating rather than paint a lot of the same things. Um, you know, I could paint seascapes forever because I love them. Um, I could paint figures probably even longer than that uh, just because I really like them. Uh, I know that most people, there, most people tend to be, at least nowadays, tend to be very landscape oriented. Um, there's a lot of people that are cityscape oriented. Cityscapes take longer. I mean, it depends upon what you're doing. They just take long. There's a lot going on. You know, you could, I shouldn't say that. You can paint them in a very uh, nice, abbreviated kind of, of fashion, too. Uh, but just, just the amount of stuff that is in a cityscape really makes it take longer. That's really what it, really what it comes down to. Just finding posts now. Basically, I'm looking for, there's a lot of heaviness right in here, but I'm going to take this one post that actually goes down this far. I stopped it way too soon. And 
Then I'm just gonna bring, there's another little post right about here. And one about there. And one closer, right about here. I'm just guessing now, you guys, in case you're wondering. I'm just plopping stuff in there that I don't even know if it goes. Ah, there's something there, I see it. Right about, almost in the center of the door, right about here. And then way over here, comes down a little lower. And then one last one, it's right about in there. Well, that helped. I just, I'm standing back now, just looking at it, realizing that it really did need that. Um, I do need to kind of fix that one post that I commented on a little bit ago that up front, um, this post here, that has a lot of light on it, a lot of light right there, and it comes down and all the way down into here. Okay. And then a lot of the other posts have light on them also, so we need to kind of go back now and indicate some of that light. There, there. A lot of light on that one too. My paint was getting a little dry. That's actually helping also nice when you do stuff and it actually helps you know that it's so I've got about almost 20 minutes hopefully that's enough to get things working the way I want them to I'm gonna be a lot looser and bolder up here actually helped quite a bit. Now there's a few other posts that I could add in. I don't know if I really want to. Um, I may add some of this uh, vertical, or excuse me, horizontal fence post or fencing uh, just back here and then maybe have it stop at about this point. It looks like it stops at um, maybe about in here. And I mix, it mixes in with the background paint, which I kind of like. There's kind of a nice, also I get a little bit of a diagonal there. And it goes down, changes down in here. And then it goes back up here. Crosses over, goes back behind. Shorter. Back here, another diagonal maybe. There's almost no sense to this fence. Now, it may, there may have been at one time, but the way I see it now, it is really just kind of a free-for-all. And I'm gonna stand back. Okay, that's holding together pretty well. It's actually helping with the perspective. I even think I might do a little bit of it up in here and then do a break in the fence because there is somewhat of a break. So, but it goes this way and I don't want that. I want it to go be kind of straight, so let's, Let's maybe make this this way and take the rest of them. Nice dry brush stroke. I kind of like that. And I think that's. I think I'm going to leave it at that. I don't think I'm going to do a lot more to that. I think what I want to do is down. There is a, a, a horizontal piece down low, and it, it falls into the shadow of the, uh, not the shadow, it falls behind some of the foliage. Foliage, I, sh I shouldn't even use that term, because it's more of a, you 
Yeah, that's working. Couldn't tell when I stepped back. And I like the fact that I'm painting into paint and I'm getting kind of a mixture as I do that. It's not neat and clean, but it's adding something. It's adding a little bit of, of really kind of interesting character to the strokes. So we've created that fence post. Now what I want to do is take some of that dark with the blue and I want to pull it a little bit more blue in it, maybe a little medium. And what we want to do is kind of pull up for some weeds and down, up, up and down. over in here. Okay, I want to have a little time to go back into those trees. And now I take a little bit of a lighter color. By lighter, uh, I mean ochre, not ochre, navels. A little turp. Kind of dry brush in some of the weeds on top. That's a fan brush might work really well here. Uh, I just don't have one on me at present. I have a lot of my uh, paints and brushes packed to go to uh, Europe on a, my workshop plein air painting trip. In Italy and uh, so I'm working with my other set of brushes which is fine There's absolutely nothing wrong with them they're actually quite good <laughs> so I'm not I want to bring some of these weeds up higher maybe a little ochre to some of those yeah that helps a little, little maybe more green I could fuss in here and there on that for a long, long time. And I don't want to call too much attention to it. So take a little bit more white, maybe a little ochre and some medium. And we'll bring some real light lights right up big up right in front. Different directions. They don't all go one direction. Okay, let's, leave, let's kind of leave that whole front thing alone. Go back onto those trees a little bit. And I'm gonna finish with doing a little bit more work in here. If you go back into this tree, uh, over in this tree probably needs the most work. So I'm gonna take, do a little bit of my blue sky. The blue, the white. Uh, here's what we wanna get. This is actually a pretty good brush to do this kind of stuff with. Just kind of scuff in these little sky holes. Because you can't, it, one thing about a, a, an egg burnt like this is you cannot lay, you cannot push the paint down heavily because it's such a flimsy tip. So you end up just kind of getting a few of these little marks to work for you. Now back right behind here we could bring some really nice tree pieces of tree right in there we could and I see a little bit of it's a pretty old right about here we'll put the uh, darks back in so we're just kind of placing some of the lights in here first. Okay, now I'll put a few of the darks because I, looking at my time, I've just got maybe 10 minutes. So we're going to put a nice tree trunk and another one there. One that breaks down here. Bring one back here. Over, over. And a 
little bit in here too. There's some dark, some darker tree trunks. Real spindly little pieces of tree. And then there's a lot of lights in there too. We'll get those in in a second. A few little darks in here. They're not going to put the branches up there. I don't like them. Um, and that's true. I'm not just saying that. <laughs> I actually don't. I think they're detracting. Uh, but I mix up a really, with my liner, a, a white, a warm white uh, with a lot of ochre in it. And we're going to put some lights in some of these tree trunks back in here. There. There. Probably a little too bright. But I'm going to darken it down just a little bit with some, there we go, with some uh, brown. Put a few, kind of working right up in here. Little pieces of tree. I'm actually, they're way heavy handed, way, way too heavy handed. So I'll show you what you do when you get that. You go back with, I'm going to use the Egbert, um, and I'm going to use a dark. Instead of tree hole, like tree holes, I'm going to go dark this time. The dark of the tree. Whatever that kind of greenish, mucky green color is. And we're just going to kind of push them back so they aren't so powerful and sitting on top. So they're hidden back behind. starts to feel pretty good okay overall it's shaping up now I'm gonna spend probably the last part of uh, my effort in on the facade because that's really the that's that's our main star of the uh, the painting so I'm gonna mix up a lot of variations of that orange and I'm gonna be a little neater now I'm gonna, particularly against that don't want to look spotty so a lot of times you just have to diffuse and lose things instead of keep adding start subtracting a little darker a little a little darker white there nope didn't hit it enough try it one more time I think I might be a little too dark but I'm not. Huh, surprise me. It feels okay, you know. I mean, there's parts that I think are working really well. I think if there's anything I would probably be objecting to, it's really more of this facade up here. And I just think I just need to work on it more. It's not that there's anything wrong. It just needs a little bit of clarity and Stepping back, I keep, I keep stepping back because I want to see how I feel about the painting from, you know, six feet away as opposed to from 18 inches. Because generally, you're painting about anywhere from 12 to 18 inches away from your painting. That's that's pretty standard. Uh, and I think getting back, you know, I'm, I've always used the, uh, the if you can cover it with your hand, you're back far enough theory. 
what do I mean by that? So right here, I can't even cover that barn. I can just barely, so I can see that, but I can't see the rest of the painting. I see my hand. But if I keep stepping back, eventually at about, where am I at? I'm probably about eight feet back. I can almost cover the whole painting. And in doing so, it's a good point of view to really look and see how your painting is going as opposed to standing right on top of it all the time. So it's, it's really important that you get back to judge. I always say, judge your painting from, uh, from a distance and correct it from up close. And I mean, I, that's basically what I do. And if it isn't working, by the way, let's just kind of get into that. So you, you step back and you look at it and you say, oh, I don't, I'm not really crazy about it. What do you do, right? You go back a stage. You go, you go back to where it looked good. And don't, because adding more detail does not improve the painting. It improves, you think you're improving the painting. It, it, it really doesn't. What, what does, is to get it where it works as a, a total, a complete whole, and then embellish if you need to. But embellish with care and with taste. Okay, this is starting to shape up. Um, it's looser sometimes than I paint, and in, a way, in some ways I like that better. Um, and I think that's due to time. Uh, I think literally, if I, I, because you give yourself a shorter amount of time, you, you cannot do the kind of refinement that you might normally do if you have forever, so to speak. Again, an advantage to plein air painting, because you don't have forever. You've got that short window of time that you're at that location. Now, there, I, I want to state one thing with, with regard to that. You can go back several times, and you want to do these nice, big, I do these uh, large, l oversized, I, I call them plain air paintings, 30 by 40, stuff like that. You do that, you gotta go back three or four days in a row. Uh, I usually only go back, I've never gone back more than three. Um, but it's, it's a way to take that to the next stage. Now, let me stand back for a second. It works, I'm not crazy about this one mark down here I just noticed, it's a little too strong. And we're, we're about a couple minutes away, so, you know, I'm just, uh, again, I'm trying to, I'm on, I use the word I'm on tape, and I, I hate to say that because it ages me. Um, I'm on video. And because as this is airing, it's probably nine o'clock at night uh, where I am in Italy, and I'm probably not painting, although we are gonna do a couple of uh, nocturnes. So um, in that regard, we might be painting. I keep looking at a lot. I keep my eye keeps going over the whole painting, and I keep finding little areas that I think, well, I need to fix that. Well, need to fix that. Well, don't necessarily need to, but it bothers me enough. Wouldn't bother everybody, but it might bother the artist. And after all, you're the one um, that is determining when the thing is complete. So. I am going to call it quits. I know I could fuss on this a little longer. Um, I could fuss on it for hours longer, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and keep the integrity of what uh, an a la primo, all at one type of painting is, and um, call it done. With the exception of maybe a few touch-ups that I might do. But uh, I'm finishing this up at about nine o'clock at night now. 
and I don't think I'm going to, if I do a touch up on it, it's not going to be tonight. And tomorrow I'm really spending most of my time packing, so I don't know how much touch up I'm going to do. In any, in any event, what you see is basically what I can get done in that amount of time. And, you know, the part I'm most happy with is that fence that I threw in. I think that really actually helped the piece more than I realized. Um, I put in more of it than I thought I was going to, but I think in the long run, it really probably helped a lot. So thanks for forcing me to do that, you guys. Um, one last thing I'm calling it is I could probably pronounce some of those weeds back behind a little bit stronger. I need to bring a little bit more acidy green into it. And we'll put, clean that up one more time. Ah, boy, I muffed that up. Here I said I was going to clean it up there. That helped a little bit. And we'll do the light on the, uh, the trough itself. And that's it. So I'm going to hit this light one more time. And that's about it. That's about what I'm going to call... Um, a completed painting and uh, hope it worked for you. Hope you got something out of it. Always hope you get something out of it. Um, I always have fun. I don't know if I get anything specifically out of it. I, I shouldn't say that truthfully. I learn uh, uh, these subjects, particularly with these subjects that I have not painted like this. I have not painted this specific subject. I've painted barns but I have not painted this one. And uh, I've had this image sitting around for a long time and always thought I could probably do something with it. But let's do it right now. And so that's where she, uh, that's where she lands right now. Looks like this roof is a dilapidating back here. Okay, I could go on forever. I'm not gonna go on forever. I'm gonna clean my brushes and call it an evening, maybe have a glass of wine. And I hope you guys have a great day, a wonderful time painting. Um, remember, this is fun, okay? It's not labor. Don't get frustrated. Or as Dan McCaw says, make frustration your friend. And have a nice day. Thanks all for watching.